Let us now look at how we would utilize an already trained RNN-TASR system during test time. This process of obtaining transcript for a test audio is also called decoding. Let us look at an example audio in order to understand the process of decoding. Say we have four audio frames in our example audio and we want to decode it. As we have assumed before, we will assume that there are only three different letters in our language in which we are transcribing the audio, letter B, letter E and letter C. Again, this is just an assumption. For English, you would have 53 letters in reality. There is a term which we would frequently using during the process of decoding. The term is hypothesis. Hypothesis represents any candidate transcript during the process of decoding. In general, in decoding, we would keep around many transcript candidates in the search space and then we would pick the best transcript candidate as the final caption of the audio when we finish the decoding. Let us now look at what are different hypotheses that can be generated at audio frame index 1. Say we are starting to decode, so our text history would be null text history and it would be represented by BOS or beginning of the sentence. We would pass beginning of sentence text history to the text predictor and we would get a text embedding. We would also pass the audio features at frame 1 to the audio encoder and get the audio embedding. So now we have audio embedding corresponding to the audio frame 1 and we have text embedding corresponding to the text history BOS. We pass the audio embedding and text embedding to the joiner. Then we pass the output of the joiner to the linear layer and then the output of the linear layer is passed to softmax and we get the probability distribution over output symbols from the softmax. Right. So now we would have four probabilities from the softmax three corresponding to the letters of our language and then one probability corresponding to the blank symbol. As we have explained before, whenever we extend a hypothesis or a transcript candidate with a blank, then that candidate goes to the next time frame in the RNNT, right? So extension with blank always moves us into the audio frame index and we go into the next audio frame. Whereas extensions with non-blank or in other words, extensions with the letters of the language will continue to stay in the current time frame. So let's say we have one extension with the blank that would go to the next audio frame. In other words, that would go to the audio frame two. Whereas extensions with the letters of the language, which are B, E and C will continue to stay in the time frame one, right? Now we could take one of the hypothesis candidates from these extended candidates and extend it. So let's say we took the candidate B and we extended it. So the B blank would go to the next audio frame, which would be in the audio frame two, whereas other extensions B, 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 E and B, C will continue to stay in the current time frame. So at this point, I have five hypotheses that are in the current time frame B, 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 E, B, C, E and C. Whereas I have two hypotheses that are in the next time frame blank and B blank. Now we can take one of these five candidate hypotheses and extend it further. So let's say we took the hypothesis C and extended it. So one of the extensions C blank would go to the next audio frame, whereas C, B, C, E and C, C will continue to stay in the current time frame. As you can imagine, I can take again one of the candidate hypotheses from the seven hypotheses at the current time frame index one and extend it. Let's say I took BE and extended it. So BE blank goes to the next audio frame, whereas BEB, BEE and BEC continue to stay in the current time frame. Now I have nine hypotheses in the current time frame, whereas I have four hypotheses in the next time frame, right? And I can take one of these nine hypotheses and extend it. So I would have one hypothesis extension that would go to the next time frame, and then I would have three extensions which would continue to stay in the current time frame. So at any point in my decoding process, I can take one of the candidate hypotheses from my current frame and extend it, right? So let's say I have total of k hypotheses at a particular audio frame index. If I take one of the hypotheses from these k hypotheses, my remaining hypotheses are k minus 1. And if I extend it and let's say there are n letters in my language, then I would get n new extensions. So my total number of extensions 
after I have extended one of the hypotheses from the k hypothesis at current time frame index would be n minus 1 plus k, right? So you are always going to increase the number of candidate hypotheses whenever you extend a hypothesis at a given audio frame index. And with this, we can never finish the decoding because we will always continue to have some hypotheses in the current time frame, which could be extended, right? And that is a challenge. So we would look at different approaches on how to deal with this challenge. Let us now formally define the operation extend hypothesis that we have used in the previous slide. Let's say we have a hypothesis EB at the tth audio frame in our decoding audio and we want to extend this hypothesis or in other words, we want to continue decoding with this hypothesis. In order to extend the hypothesis, we need to pass the text history of the hypothesis to the text predictor which will give us text embedding and we need to pass the audio feature at time frame t to the audio encoder which would give us audio embedding. After the application of joiner network and linear layer and softmax, we would get probability distribution over output symbols as the output from the softmax. The output symbols would be the letters of the language and blank. As we assumed before, we would continue to assume that in our language we only have three letters, letter E, letter B and letter C. New hypothesis that is extended with blank symbol from hypothesis EB will go to next time frame that is time frame T plus 1. Other extended hypotheses will continue to stay in current time frame. So hypothesis EB blank would go to the next time frame which is time frame T plus 1 and hypotheses EBE, EBB, EBC will continue to stay in current time frame which is time frame T. One thing to note is that when we extend the hypothesis, the extended hypothesis is going to have lower probability than the hypothesis from which it is extended. The reason for this is that the probability of extended hypothesis with a specific output symbol is going to be the probability of original hypothesis multiplied by probability value obtained from softmax for the output symbol. Since we are multiplying two values and both of those values are less than one, the multiplied value would be lower than any one of those values. And hence, any hypothesis which is extended from a given hypothesis would have lower probability than the hypothesis from which it was extended. We will use this fact during the beam search process which we would describe in the future slides.